What's up guys, welcome along today. We are here at the wonderful Snetterton race circuit in the lovely Norfolk countryside in the east of England. Track day, big day today. First time I've been out on the bike in 2024. Uh, first time ever in advanced group, a bit nerve wracking, uh, but you've got to get dragged along at some point. Uh, big changes to the bike, gearing change, fun brake, suspension changes. If you've watched the rest of the channel, You'd have seen all of that. I'll pop a link in the corner in the description if you want to have a look. So we're just about, we've done the noise testing, done the signing on. We're just about to head out on track. I've not been here since 2016, so a long time. Just about squeezed into the levers. So let's go out for the first session, see how we get on. So here we go then, the Snetterton 300. This is actually the third session of the day. Didn't record the first session because it was a couple of sighting laps, pretty boring. Second session, I had the camera on, it actually flew off and hit the kill switch, we'll talk about that later on. Now as you can see the traction control lights also flickering, meaning the traction control system isn't operating. I'm not sure why that is, again we'll discuss that later on when we're back at home. Uh, aim of today is to try and be a little bit more aggressive with the bike, try and downshift a bit earlier into the braking zones and use the engine braking a bit more, lean it over more and try and get used to using the full width of that uh, 200 rear section tyre and to stay out of trouble and not have any incidents.
So guys, morning session's done. Uh, a bit of onboard footage from there. First things first, we had a few noise testing issues at Snetterton this year. Pleased to say the bike blew 98 dB and has nobody's been pulled today or sent home. So I think they've sorted that and moved the sound meters a little bit further back. No problems there. Bike's performing brilliantly. Uh, suspension changes seem to have worked a treat. The wear on the rear tire is a lot better. The front forks aren't bossing out. Aim of today was just to get out, test the bike, test the differences. I haven't really been using the fan brake yet, but the gearing seems perfect for this track. Long straights, just nearing the red line in sixth gear at the end of the longest straights. Advanced group's going well. I have overtaken a couple of people, been overtaken by a lot of people, but it's uh, it's all about building confidence and getting up there. So I'm glad we went for that. Weather's been spectacular. So yeah, really good day. Hopefully, out for some afternoon sessions, a bit more onboard footage, and we'll speak to you then. So this is the most exciting of the onboard sessions from the afternoon. It's actually the second to last session. Um, the last session of the day I didn't do due to an issue of the bike, which we'll look at in the debrief afterwards. The day was played by a few false neutrals, um, I believe going all the way down into first with some of the hairpins, which really disrupted the rhythm a little bit, made it difficult to, to get into a nice smooth rhythm every session. However, I also never got the kind of carrot in front of me that went past just that little bit quicker than me for me to chase around. Everybody who's coming past was a bit too fast to latch on the back of them. So that didn't help either. Anyway, a little bit of grass tracking in this one if you want to watch along. And I'll do a little talk over partway through about some of the things you've learned and why it's so important if you can to video your onboards and watch it back as everything slows down a little bit and the video footage is invaluable in trying to learn to ride the bike better. So sit back and enjoy and I'll cut in for a lap halfway through. Go on board lap of Snetterton 300. I can tell in this session I'm definitely more fatigued in the morning by being far less consistent. Anyway, on the home straight, get her wound up all the way up into sixth gear. Into turn one, which is a fast, ballsy corner. I started the day going back to third, ended it only going back to fourth, but I still need to carry more entry speed. Down into the hairpin, quite happy with the braking and downshifting into the hairpin. Just more trail braking. Out of the hairpin, I would like to have tried to hold it and rev it out more in first and only go up to second rather than shifting up to third to carry this left hander in second. It would have given me better drive out of this left hander and only changing again, revving it out more, only changing up to fourth down into Agostini's would have only meant going back three gears.
out of Agostini's, I would also like to try to just rev it fully out in first gear and hold it in second into Hamilton's and see how that performed. Which meant we could have then changed it down into first into Oggies. I found it's hard to build momentum through Oggies onto the back straight throughout the whole day. I think that comes down to uh, sending myself to the moon once upon a time and being very cautious on the throttle. Bikes in quite fast down the straight for, a, for an old R1, so I was pleased with that. And very, very strong on the brakes under the bridge. Happy with the braking into the left, I just feel like I should have stayed a bit further left and sacrificed the entry into the right hand of Nelson's to get the drive out rather than the entry in. Down towards the bomb hole, didn't get this right all day. I scraped my foot on the floor quite early on in the day, so I was quite tentative through there the whole day. Just need to carry more speed and keep it flowing. And the same into Corums. It pinches up here on the entry and it made this, the track seem quite narrow and then seems to open up again. So you can actually carry far more entry speed into there than you realise. Around the left hander, back over the start finish line. So those are a few of the little bits and pieces I'm going to be trying next time we're back.
morning guys, it's the day after the day before. Too tired last night to unload and still looking and feeling very tired today. Super unfit and a hard day. Anyway, mega day at Snesterton, we'll run for a quick debrief. Um, really glorious weather all day. No noise issues at all, at all, which is really good considering all the bad press sessions had recently. And even managed to take the baffles out in the afternoon for a bit more noise with no problems. A good buddy of mine lost his track day virginity. Big smiles for him all day. And I think the disease has fully set in for him now. So he'll be out on track a lot more. So let's begin with some positives of the day. Really pleased that I made it into the advanced group and made that decision. It was only about 25 to 30 riders in it, so loads of clear track time, no red flags through the whole day. And even though I was probably one of the slowest in the group, um, because all the guys know what they're doing a bit more on the right racing line, they can get past you safely and cleanly. Um, so yeah, I had to take the punt at some point, so I'm glad we did that. Uh, moving on, the tyre wear. I'm really happy with the improvement of tyre wear from what we had before. It's now showing a much, much more even, decent tyre wear pattern and a bit further over to the edge as well. So the suspension changes we made to the bike, I'm pleased have done what we wanted them to do. Thumb brake, didn't get much of a chance to use it. Really, it was just to try and feel it as a bit of wheelie control onto the straights. It's a very, very fast track, so a lot to take in through the day. Like I said, we've not been out yet this year, and I've not been there since 2016, so it'd be a bit too much to take on. Um, I did survive some grass tracking if you've watched it on board, so that was always good. And Gerard was very, very well behaved throughout the day. No issues down the pit lane. Oh yes, and we did also complete the checklist, so that's a positive. A few negatives to maybe look at or something to improve on for next time. I kept getting a lot of false neutrals, and I believe it's probably because um, we're changing down into first gear for some of the hairpins, and I just wasn't hitting the lever hard enough. So normally with the auto blipper, you're just tapping it, it's dropping it down a gear. From second to first, you've got to go through the neutral gate. So it just wasn't hitting it hard enough, which just meant that a few times it would run on and sort of really disturb the rhythm that you're trying to get into around the track. Also found it very hard to get into a rhythm because of the your markers around the circuit. I find the Sneston circuit, there's some good markers for some corners, but others, they're quite vague. There's no real reference points on the track or at the side, or it's something I personally struggle with to pick out to try and make sure you're consistent every time around the lap. Also had the traction control system light flashing all day, which basically indicates there's an issue with the system and it's not operational. Not sure why that is, never had any problems. I did have the wheel speed sensor out when I was cleaning the brakes out and doing the forks, so potentially there's the air gaps may be slightly wrong or there's some debris in there, or the sensor wiring is just broken. So we'll investigate that, but it basically means it wasn't working, so you just sort of ride with that in the back of your mind. Um, we did have an incident where the camera mount came off the front of the bike flapped back and actually hit the kill switch, switched the bike off. Luckily I was on a straight when that happened um, and I pretty quickly figured out what had happened. So I managed to pull the clutch in, flip the kill switch back on, get it started and roll back around to pit lane and sort that out. But that was quite an incident. Um, and then we didn't do the last session because I noticed in the second to last session, something didn't feel quite right. We've actually found a load of play in these headstock bearings. So that is now something that we will need to investigate, see whether the bearings have collapsed or if it just needs a bit of tightening up or whatever. So we are back out at Brands Hatch GP in about three weeks time to make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss a bit of action there. We're gonna get the bike sorted, ready to go back out. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Look after yourselves, we'll see you soon. Ta-ta.